Today's episode is brought to you by Omaze. Visit us at omaze.com slash curiosity incorporated for more information. Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. From home, honey. Hi everyone and welcome to today's episode. Well, the last couple days have been kind of crazy. I went out and bought a bunch of stuff from an estate, including an old jewelry box. We put that video up a couple days ago. Um, then I got a motorcycle and I was gonna go through the other boxes and, of stuff that I had, but then my truck got smashed up and we've been dealing with insurance and all that. But you know what, today's the day. I'm gonna go through these boxes. They've been sitting here, hanging out in our front entrance way, looking terrible. Um, so we're gonna sort through it, but I think to do this, to go through these mystery estate boxes, I'm gonna need a little bit of help from Melissa. So Melissa, are you uh, up for helping me out? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna move some of these boxes, I guess, one by one. And uh, this time, I guess Melissa's gonna go through them while I am the cameraman and uh, I guess commentator on the side, we'll see. Hey, let's have fun, go through some boxes. Okay, I'm gonna move this painting out of the way. Good thing there's nobody walking in through the door. That'd be a terrible place to put it if the kids were just coming home from school or something. Um, let's do this box first, maybe. Do you want me to carry it? Okay. Okay, I'll carry it. I'm very pleased to announce that this video is being sponsored by Omaze. Now, if you've been on the internet, you've probably seen some of the sponsorships they've done with some pretty big celebrities, Kevin Bacon, Motley Crue. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. I think the whole cast of Downton Abbey did an Omaze giveaway too. Well, this uh, time they've asked me and I feel super honored that they've done that. Um, what do they do? Well, they give away one of a kind prizes and experiences while donating money to chosen charities all across the world. Their sustainable approach to fundraising means that nonprofits can spend less time and money worried about fundraising and instead focus on serving the needs of their communities. So what's the prize this time? It's a whopping $100,000. You read that right, 100,000 bucks. Now take a deep breath and imagine the massive difference this could make in your life. Um, would you say farewell to debt? Uh, maybe this is the seed money that you need to start a business or maybe this life-changing $100,000 uh, would fund your future, whether you wanna go back to school or maybe plan a dream destination wedding. Uh, whatever it is, the possibilities are endless. When you're investing in yourself, there's no wrong way to spend a hundred thousand bucks. <laughs> I mean, um, I could probably get myself into trouble with a hundred thousand bucks. I mean, I know I would do the smart thing and I'd put it towards our house that we're building right now, but I'd kind of want to buy a really cool, crazy old car or maybe uh, replenish my Hot Wheel toy collection. Either way, um, it's a it's a lot of money. You could do a whole bunch of stuff with. Um, who is the charity that they're fundraising for this time? It's called Journey House. Journey House uh, supports former foster and probation youth to live fully independent, successful lives. Founded in 1983, they provide emotional support and guidance as well as financial aid to help with the cost of attending college and vocational schools. So your generosity will go to support former foster youth in obtaining their higher educations. If you go to omaze.com slash curiosity incorporated, you can enter for your chance to win the $100,000 prize. Pretty cool. Um, they've done a lot of really neat giveaways and a lot of um, really wonderful things have been uh, supported. Lots of great charities have been supported from it, so I'm glad that they asked me to be involved. For your chance to win $100,000 and support Journey House, just go to omaze.com slash curiosity incorporated and you can donate there. And um, heck, if one of our viewers wins 100,000 bucks, you definitely have to let me know. That'd be so cool to hear about that. So um, great cause. Uh, great prize, and um, here's hoping that it works out well. Anyway, guys, back to the video. So you're like my Vanna White today. You're the... <laughs> yeah. I've been waiting, you guys, for a while. I saw these boxes sitting there, and it's taken all my strength not to peek in them while Alexander was gone. Today's the day. <laughs> okay, box number one. So I guess after we unpack some stuff, we can just lay it on the table, and we'll see what the loop looks like. Okay. Um, maybe I'll grab a... Ah, there we go. I guess that works, too. I was gonna get a recycle bag, but we'll do that later. We have a brown teapot. This is a big teapot. That would hold a lot of tea. 
Is it marked on the bottom? I'm looking. I have. Mm. It says Hale Hall. Hall. Okay. Maybe it sounds like an English name. I don't know my teapots that well, but that's got a cute form to it. I'm sure somebody would like that. And well, it looks nice. It doesn't look like there's chips or anything in it. No, it looks pretty good. And we sell tea at the store, so maybe I could even uh, put that out by the newer teapots we sell. What is this? You know, that's a great question. Glassware is one. It almost looks like a... Um, it has like a handle and everything in here, so... It might have been like for pickles or something like that, like a table side presentation sort of thing. I'm going to go with candy jar. Candy? But look, your hand can't fit in it. Smart candy jar. Candy jar made by mothers. Well, your hand can fit in it. Can you get that out? I don't want to chip it. How do they get it in there? Wait, hang on. We'll use the powers of science. Ah. Uh, Ta-da! Mm. Is there oh, the other? Oh, it has the other little. Okay. Oh, I see. So that is broken off. That's fixable though. I don't know if I'd trust uh, pulling it up by that after it's repaired, but let's see what it looks like with the lid on. I'm just putting it back in there. That is an early piece. This is, I wonder if that's, that might actually be silver, like solid silver, the top. If it's marked, it might be, it would have to be hallmark it's... somewhere. It's at least silver plate, but yeah. the reason I thought maybe solid silver is because of how ornate that is. That looks like a Victorian era. But it feels lighter. Well, yeah, silver, when it's just um, silver on its own, it isn't very heavy because they try and use the thinnest plate they can because it was expensive even back then. Neat That's piece. That's an interesting piece. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Maybe somebody watching at home knows exactly what that is. Is it uh, for your dinner table for putting a dish in? I think so, but uh, maybe we'll see. Ba -ba -ba -bum, oh. ba -ba Pyrex. <laughs> What do you think of that pattern? It's nice. This is probably more 1970s, I would say, the way that that's printed on there. Yeah. Because the pattern that you were after, and we were chasing Pyrex for quite some time, the Pyrex that you were looking for was the Amish butter print pattern. Apparently, that, it's actually called something else. I thought, no, I'm pretty sure it's Amish butter print. Is that what they called it from Pyrex? Yeah, I believe so. I don't know. That's what it's referred to. This, yeah. would you, what kind of flowers are those? Daisies. So this is the daisy. This would have been good for our, our house considering we had so many daisies on our property. Yeah. But it's only one piece, so it's in good shape, though. It's in really good shape. And it's got the lid, which is always nice. Oh, there's one more. One more. Oh, that's heavier than I was expecting. Oh, yeah, that's like a chalet art glass or... You know what that reminds me of? Uh, some, like, fish lips going... Fish Woo! lips. <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of amazing. It if looks you, like a tulip. If you check the bottom of it, flip it over... A lot of times, very lightly etched, you'll have the, the maker's name on there. I don't see anything on that one, though. No. Chalet is sometimes etched chalet, but that is 19... That's a cool piece. Yeah, like 1960s sort of era art glass. Very popular, actually. Those are those are easy items to sell. So that was pretty good. So is that everything that was in that box? Oh, no. There's one more thing. Oh, yeah. Newspaper. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Okay, let's grab another box. Okay, I'm ready for box number two. Good. There's just little feet sticking out of this one. <laughs> Help me! Okay. I feel like it's gonna be a clown. Oh, yeah. Oh, that is not what I was expecting with a date baby face. Yeah, that would, this is an early piece. Sometimes they had these um, really loose baggy clothes because you would use them to actually put your, uh, you'd have it on your nightstand and you'd put like your clothes or, or laundry in the back of it. I don't think this one's big enough for I've that. I've seen ones that are open on the bottom that you put your bags in. Oh. <laughs> I think this one's more just decor, but yeah. that, judging by the face, that is probably fairly old. You know, 1940s era. It's in really good shape, though. And it's not an excessively creepy clown. I know people who are fans of clowns, they, they take um, umbrage, they take offense if you say clowns are creepy, because no, they like their clowns. And that one's not creepy, it's just kind of a cute thing. So we had little feet there. Oh, you found another one? Is it another one? Oh yeah, it is. Hold on. Oh, that's that's definitely more 1930s or maybe even earlier. This would be one I think you put your linens and stuff in. Yeah, it has the no, hole in the back. No, this one has the... This is for bags. This is, I'm pretty sure that's a bag holder, isn't it? What bags would they have been putting in there back in the mm -hmm. 1920s? You know, same bags. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure they didn't have plastic reusable grocery bags. We might use it for that now. Right. Um, but back then it would have been if you had, you know, socks or sheets or things or 
Because it has room. Or maybe your linens. I don't know. It, it is meant to be a holder and hanging off of something. That's Just cool. an interesting way of storing it. But really good condition. Nice fabric face. And uh, surprisingly, that hat is still there. You'd think after all those years, that hat would have gone missing or been yoinked off by some kid. Yeah, it's still sewn on completely strong. Okay, set that aside. I don't know what these things are, so I don't want to pull a head off or... Oh, I recognize it. Do you know what they're called? Uh, nope. It's a Cupid doll. This is a Cupid doll? That's a Cupid doll. Yeah, oftentimes they were like at carnivals, like if you knock down the, the pins or the bottles and you won a prize, that would be like a prize that you'd win. I thought that the Cupid dolls were like just the little kids. like. The, uh... <laughs> no, this would have been the Cupid sort of style with the big eyes. She would date to probably somewhere around the early 1930s or so. And I see there's another green one in there too. May as well pull them both out. Being that they're just cast plaster, um, they're in reasonably decent condition considering how old they are. See, same pose, same casting, just painted different colors. Knock the pins down and win a prize. What would you say if I would have won a prize at a carnival and brought that home to you? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you, I, we need to let's put it right next to the bed on right now. <laughs> now watch me sleeping. Yeah, yeah, just uh, you know, not an overly expensive thing at the time. Fairly collectible, I guess. You know, now they the people who are collecting Cupid dolls, of course, you've gotten a lot older, and there's not as many of them out there. But as a little uh, statue from the era, it's kind of a neat piece. So let's keep digging. Oh, more art glass. Actually, that's a little earlier. The other piece we had was 1950s to 70s, kind of, I'd say 60s or 70s era art glass vase. This is more of a uh, depression kind of glass or carnival glass vase, more of a um, art nouveau, art deco kind of, more of an art nouveau or craftsman kind of style. They look like flowers, kind of both of them. It's really pretty actually. It's, very, it's iridescent. It has all these different sort of colors, like a rainbow in it. Really good shape, which is important. That's a nice piece. Carnival glass, I think, is what that's called. This one, uh, I can't, can't. it's heavy. It's a heavy mm -hmm. Coke bottle. Well, they must have bought this at an antique store many, many years ago. Scarce color variant, $25. And they're right. This is, in fact, one of the first Coke bottles... What's cool about this, this would date to somewhere around the early 1900s. So this is like one of the first Coke bottles. And the reason why it has this flat side on it, um, like the new Coke bottles, you know how they're kind of hourglass shaped? Yeah. Um, that came after this. And the reason why this is flat side is because it would have had a paper label, like a pharmacy label on it, um, that had the Coca-Cola brand on, on the label. It's very, very hard to find them with the paper label still intact, but that's why there's this big empty space right here because there would have been a paper label. Um, this green color is a very rare and unusual color, definitely worth more than the $25. In fact, you could almost add another zero at the end of it if it didn't have that chip. Um, the clear glass bottles sell for around 100. This would be still with the chip in it probably around a couple hundred dollars or more. Um, it's got the uh, Coca-Cola logo emblazoned on the bottom and property of the Coca-Cola company Canada, making it even more rare because there's less people in Canada than the United States. So it was a very early and very unique Coke bottle. In fact, I've not seen another one in this sort of olive green color before. So that might be one I should check out that might be worth quite a bit more money than what we expect. So good score. I was surprised at how heavy it was. Yeah, they're heavy. I thought there was something in it. Oh, it's not a it gazing was, ball. It's... Oh, it was on top of her head. <laughs> okay, what, like, so, sitting, that's like her that's, brain? That's how it was in the box. I think this little dish, she's got sort of a Victorian kind of look to her, melt glass, probably early 1900s, somewhere around there. She might have had a lid that looked like the top of her head. I can't imagine they would have had that. So, so the ball was sitting right on top? Maybe she's having a very intense thought. And that's her thought bubble coming up. I mean, that's a look. <laughs> it's kind of creepy. It looks like her brain is hemorrhaging, is, is herniating out of the top of the head. I feel like head. they probably just put it in the box like that. It didn't come like that. Yeah, no, I think it's meant. 
I mean, that's kind of neat on its own, just a little glass ball. But it almost reminds me of a um, uh, a weight, uh, like a float, like a glass yeah. uh, fishing float that doesn't have the net around it. But I'm sure it's just a decorative ball. It's cool though, either way. But that's a neat piece. Condition's generally quite good. We'll have to look it up and see. I'm certain she would have had a, uh, I don't see, no maker's mark that I can see on it. But she probably would have had a little lid. I can, or who knows, maybe she didn't. I mean, it is finished very nicely around the top. If they were going to cover that with a lid, that you don't think they would have done that little extra sort of rope pattern beading all around the edge. But that's neat. Okay, what else is in there? Bum, 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 bum. Oh. Okay. I'm making a lot of people cringe. Whoop, especially now. <laughs> Well, right off the hop, I can see there's a little bit of damage right here. I didn't do that just now, just. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? So this is a nice art vase. Um, it's probably marked on the on the bottom. Can you see if I flip it over, does it say anything on the bottom? Yeah. Do you wanna see? Okay, I'll, but don't put your hands on the ornamentation. I'm not, I have the on back these, is flat. Okay, I'll let you hold it because we don't want to accidentally break any of those flowers and things there's off. There's nothing on the back. Uh, Royal Ducks. D U X. So it is a an actual. It's a studio piece, Royal Ducks Potteries. Fortunately, it's got a little bit of um, condition challenges with the tip of the leaf here missing and a little bit off the handle. That is repairable. You can actually find people who can fill that piece in and mold it just the way it was, and they'll airbrush and match it perfectly. Um, this would have been part of a pair, I would think. Like, I don't think it was a standalone piece. It probably would have been a side-by-side, -side, but... It's kind of interesting, though, how they have the top. Yeah, it's it's very much in that um, decorative kind of uh, Art Nouveau sort of style, similar in age, actually, to this this vase here. You know, it's probably from the, you know, 1900 to 1920 kind of range, I would guess. That's without me looking it up and knowing for sure. Maybe I'm way off. Maybe it's a lot older, but it, it definitely has that sort of motif that was popular around the time. But, neat item. I'm going to move it back. So. You want to trust the Cupid dolls near it? No. Oh, I see. That looks like another art glass piece. Yep. Do you want me to take both out or just the one? Yeah, sure. That's another uh, 60s sort of era art glass vase. Same thing. That's Not nice. marked. But nice. Is that it for that box? That's it for this box. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, now I know it's in here because I've had many of these over the years and actually I'm excited to have this. But why don't you open it up for the folks at home? Before you do, hey, on, before you open it up, there are very few things like this that are collectible now. Um, and when you get one like this, these are easy to sell. Okay, I'll show you why. What's inside? Bing, ba, ba, bum. It's a Singer sewing machine. Do you want me to take it all the way out? Yeah, let's take it all the way out. Here, I'll take the, the accessories out. A little button holder with the instructions. What's a lot of people, people all the time write me at the store and they say, I've got a sewing machine at home. It's a treadle sewing machine. They have gone flat in terms of collectability. And I always ask, do you have oh. any smaller sewing machines? Because the feather lights like this, or the featherweight sewing machines are the type that are still collectible. So these little machines, they're, what, about half the size of a normal sewing machine? Yeah, way lighter. Way lighter, yeah. Especially yep. for this date. But they are compact, they're portable, um, they work wonderfully. They're a great machine and people love them now, not just because of their collectability, but they're a wonderful functioning machine that you can put in this little carry case and take around with you. People do quilting parties and, uh, it's just a wonderful item. So a sewing machine like this could be anywhere from four to $500 Canadian. This is in really nice shape. It has the, its manual stuff. has the manual. Um, has all the little accessories that go with it. So it's totally complete and uh, just lovely, lovely condition overall. So that's a that's a great score right there. So what do you think of that thing? I think it's awesome. <laughs> it's cool. 
Did you ever see yourself using something like that? Yeah, of course. That's, I mean, if I could figure out how they would work it properly. Well, it's got the manual. Yeah, true. But I need like the Melissa instructions. Mm, I'm sure that <laughs> between your mom and grandma. Oh, my mom and grandma most definitely would know how to work that. They'd be up and putting <laughs> buttons and things that don't need buttons within minutes <laughs> with that buttonholer attachment. They'd probably make me like a whole outfit while I was sitting for tea. <laughs> well, so far I'd say this is probably one of the um, coolest things, would you agree, that we got out yeah. of the lot so far? So far this is my favorite part. That my favorite thing out of the pick thus far is it's, the Singer sewing machine. In the last five years of me buying and selling a gazillion antiques, the only thing that you've kind of wanted to keep was a set of the Amish butter print Pyrex dishes. Yeah. And you've thought this is cool. Yeah, this is cool. So I think you should just have it. Well, no, I think you should have it. I think I think it should be yours. You'd never ask for anything. And if you think it's cool and it's something you're going to use, we're going to take this one out of the pile. And that's going to become yours. Well, maybe I am going to have to do a vlog on attempting to sew with it then. Oh, yeah. You have to check out Melissa's channel for that. <laughs> That'll be, I'll see if I keep my fingers. Thank you. That's... Well, of course. Yeah. Well, now I'm excited to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So something for Melissa. Um, let's see what's in some of these other boxes. Okay, well, the teacups are obvious. They were sitting in this little tray. But what's funny is that you were more excited not about the teacups. <laughs> I have the larger version of this tray, and I know that they're for in the fridge for organizing. <laughs> yeah, it's a refrigerator organizer, and that's what Melissa was excited about. <laughs> but that said, the teacups are pretty cool. Look, that one's got a Mountie on it. Yeah, these are pretty That's cool. an RCMP teacup. But they're not really... You know, it's nice that they're nice teacups and all, but they're only worth something if the uh, matching little dishes are with it, the little plates are with it. So let's open up the uh, the inside and see what we've got. Let's look at some of the patterns on these. There's some funky looking stuff going on here. Oh yeah, wow, okay. I see. Look. It's like you knew. Well, you would hope that they'd keep it's them together. Lily the Valley. Uh, oh yeah, that's for this one. Yeah, I'm gonna take this one out. I can see they got their Royal matches. Albert. I saw this one in see there. See, that one matches one. that. Royal Stewart? I didn't even know that was a thing. Royal Stewart. Birthday flowers. December's holly. That's the one you kind of thought was cool. The wild rose. Rosina fine boat. Oh, that's the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. So these are all of the matching plates. Yeah, I think these are all the plates yeah. for the... Okay, so we'll just leave those aside. I'll match them up when we get to the shop. This is a really curious symbol. I mean, we had some other Masonic items come out of this collection, and this just kind of all these sort of um, stars, almost like pentagrams on here and stuff. This has definitely a Masonic sort of feel to it, but I don't know if it is. Somebody at home knows better than I, but... I don't know, it's just like there's the book in the middle, like the book of knowledge and then the cups and stuff. This has masons kind of written all over it. So I wonder if that's a Masonic teacup set because they were in the masons. That would not surprise me. And if it is that, if that is the case, I've not had one before. That'll be the first masons teacup that I've ever had. Yeah, I've never <laughs> seen that before. Yeah, it's a little bit odd. Okay, let's see what else. Snake bite, hold on. A septo snake bite outfit, what? For removal of snake venom by suction, the most effective method known. What did you buy? Well, I don't know. Let's look inside. Open box. Examine outfit and read carefully. So it's it's a tin, right? Don't get excited. Get medical help as soon as possible, but do not exert yourself unnecessarily. <laughs> okay, well, what's inside of it? Is it? A, hey, what if it's a pop-out springy snake? You know, that's why I'm opening it really slow. Is that where you're pointing it towards me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, I'm going to be the one who gets the springy snake? Nope. No, nope, it's actually a thing. Oh, look, yeah, that's for uh, stopping the venom from going oh, in. Oh, so my you, gosh. You tie it's off like a the... little tourniquet. Yeah. Oh, look at that. It looks like a kazoo, but I guess you would squeeze that mm -hmm. in and it would suck the venom out of you. Here, let's, let me put it on your arm. Maker. I'm no, not gonna, thank you. I'm not going to suction your arm up with it. I just want to. No, no, I'm good. Look, yeah, how about I don't squeeze it? I'm just going to rest it on your arm. <laughs> just kidding. So I guess you do that and then, ah, you tie your arm off and then you just pump this and hope this would replace another person's mouth sucking it out and spitting oh it out. Oh my goodness. That is, that's. It's got the instructions. I'm just going to dump this out just in case it's skins or something. Oh, a razor blade. Oh, yeah, it's it is good a thing razor you didn't blade. dig your hand around in there. 
Well, that is your full on uh, iodine applicators. That's your full um, snake bite kit. Oh my goodness, I've never. Well, we have like. We don't really have a lot of poisonous snakes around here, but I'm sure there's no. people who are in other parts of the United States or elsewhere. They're probably that, like, yep, we got one of those. Australia, where they're like, everything can kill you. Oh, what a <laughs> cute puppy. It's a dingo. Okay. Okay, I gotta, I won't dig. I'll let you dig. Okay. It's a little European looking house. It looks like a little Tudor English style house. Let's look at the bottom. Has a little patent number. Old in England, hand painted. England. Grimwades. Oh, that's cute. I think somebody's job that week was to go to work and paint this. How was work today, love? Oh, good day at the office. Painted up many a cottage I did. <laughs> that's a cute little thing. But look, they have all this little sort of thatching for a thatched roof and they put trees and vines and stuff. What a cute little teapot. We're going to get a little teapot collection before long here, too. Oh, we've... you were right. What? Another teapot? Another oh, that's, teapot. A fan... that's a fancy pants teapot. Look at that. Look at this tiny little spout on that. It's a little teapot, short and stout. <laughs> um, I'm trying to make out the make on it. Let me just the have a look. Hand-painted Nippon. So it's Nippon wear. But they have this beautiful sort of um, raised ornamentation all around it, and it's all hand painted. And this is this is the hole to let the steam out, of course. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. That's cute. Next up in the box is a creamer. Oh yeah, that's um, Art Deco creamer. Uh, it says Nippon. Nippon. Another Nippon wear. Okay. Hand painted Nippon. So these are not matching. That's very much sort of that um, almost kind of Egyptian throwback sort of style. Very ornate and elaborate. Beautifully done with that blue and the gold. What a lovely piece. Look at the handle. How ornate that is. Very, very cool. Okay. It's like, it's, it looks like a lot of glassware in here. I'm guessing because there's a lot of paper. Oh, there's a matching sugar bowl. Oh, yeah. It is indeed. It's a nice little set. It's like Christmas, but for a store stock. <laughs> oh, I think I've seen one like this before, maybe. The iridescent finish on it. Royal Winton. Made in England. Well, isn't, look at that. Super shiny. This one has a scene on the inside of the cup. I'm not sure what it says. Atlas China, Stoke and Trent, England. And it has a, looks like a birdhouse and a, um, Yeah, it looks like a birdhouse and a sundial, like a little garden sort of picturesque scene. I guess as you drink, as you sip your tea to the bottom, you'd see the image. Hardly ever do you see an image in the inside of a teacup at the bottom there, because usually that's covered by your beverage, but I guess you'd have a little bonus scene once you drink it all the way done. I wonder if the saucers are in there too. Probably. This oh. one has a little flower design on the back. That's nice. Like a royal blue with gilding. Salisbury Fine Bone China made in England. That's a nice one. Oh, another cup. Another one of these ones? Yep. Oh, I see plates coming out. There's plates oh. in the bottom. The matching one for this one? We had that, didn't um, we? Yeah, that I think that's one. this one, yeah. It's a handsome little set. Oh. Oh. Nope. Nope. It's not. You're right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Who let you in here? <laughs> Smashing all the things around. Well, I'm no better. I mean. There's the matching sugar bowl. Oh, look at that. Here. Ooh. Isn't that an ever a nice set for your cream and your sugar? That is cool. Like if I, 
if I was collecting this type of stuff, I would definitely go for more of the Art Deco stuff like this because look at the design on that. It's just phenomenal. And condition's really good. That is a very, very pretty set. I imagine there was probably a teapot at some point too because you wouldn't think they would just do a creamer and a sugar bowl. It'd be nice if the teapot was in there. Well, I guess we'll see. Little pink cup. Yep. No saucer for some of these yet, I guess. Oh, creamer for the set. Oh yeah, okay, so we have the teapot, the creamer, and the sugar bowl. So that's pretty much a complete little set there other than the teacups. So that's fairly complete. I'm gonna move that out of the way. Ah, that is um, military, um, f uh, nurses would have used these. I'm trying to remember exactly what they were used for. It, it was, um, these were used by the Red Cross during both the First and the Second World War. And I believe it's called an invalid feeder that, um, this was a way of getting food into a wounded soldier's mouth that really couldn't feed themselves. Um, so this has some wartime use. This might be an earlier one, just looking at how the, um, you know, the cross is hand painted on there and the way it's um, decorated. This might be first world war, but um, the second world war ones look almost identical. Really, um, you know, interesting part of military history and kind of a cool thing you don't come across every day. So kind of an odd ball thing to find in there, but that's, that's neat. And the missing plates. Oh, there we go. There's the plates for the, uh, the saucers for the teacups. So they yeah. all, that's the okay, one. good. The fancy one is there. That's oh, that nice. one that we thought. Okay, good. And then right. this one. Oh yeah. With the bird feeder and another one. So pretty much all these teacups have their matching saucer. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's see what there is over by the door. Now, some of these boxes were a little bit heavier. This one I can definitely see in the top of. Now, Melissa, what were you saying about these? You said these are sort of fancier, right? Yeah, oh God, the, gosh, they're the, heavy. They're the French. Le, like, Le, Le Crusette, France. I have the knockoff version of that because these But are, this is the real version. Yeah, this is the real version. So if you, do they still make these new? Yep, the company's still around today. And what do they normally sell for? A lot. <laughs> like what's a lot? Well, like for something like this? Yeah. But I don't know, like a lot to me is like a hundred dollars. <laughs> so are these, I haven't looked them up. Like, so are they like a hundred dollars? Like new, mine, or? the uh, the Dutch oven size, like the one that I have is, I don't remember how many, how big it is, but I mean, that's like $400. If it was in this brand or the one that we have. I would have to look it up. I well, that, yeah, that's pretty cool. And I mean, the fact that they're made in France, they've got this beautiful little wooden handle and spout. These even now are worth a couple hundred dollars on their own, even with the, the little notches and stuff. They're actually in really good shape. Like usually you have quite a bit of wear on the porcelain. Yeah, but, it's not bad. A couple no, little that's... nicks on the spout, but other than that, they're pretty good. And there's, a, there's another one there, like a little pot with a lid and a pan. Um, and I think we've got a, a, looks like a bean pot in here as well, which you can bake your chili in or do all kinds of stuff in there. It's kind of a, a neat piece. In the bigger box, I don't think there's, oh, look, there's another one of these vases. Like the one, um, I'll mostly keep it wrapped up, but that's the matching. So I thought it was a pair and it is. There's the other one. And that one has it. It has the handle on it. So maybe that one's a little bit better. Okay, so we do have a pair of those. Um, do you want to see what's in here? Sure. And while you're looking at that, there there is a big piece of chalet art glass right there. And it has all its little nubs. Those are oftentimes broken or missing. We have to keep it in good condition because it's not worth as much if it gets broken. Uh, I'm terrible at reading handwriting. Uh, to Fred and Janet for, or from, maybe Percy with the very, uh, with the very best of wishes for your happiness, 1937. Oh, it's a little mountain scene. Oral, D-Oral or Errol, 1937. 
1937. Purchase as a gift, might have been in a gift shop, you know, visiting the Rocky Mountains or something like that. Kind of a nice little image. It's odd, a lot of times you don't see, people don't usually put um, oil paintings behind glass. Usually you put glass over top of a watercolor, but not over an oil because you want to see the depth and the texture. But somebody has added glass to this, and maybe it's had glass all along, but that's definitely unusual for sure. A nice little painting. There was actually another painting too that I set by the door, which I'll wander over and have a look at. This is going to be probably, I don't think it's dated, but the way this is built looks to me like late 1800s, early 1900s around then. It's signed P. Kemp, and it looks like your typical sort of, you know, pastoral, you know, <laughs> livestock scene. Where they're walking into the ocean or the lake. There's some boats out there, and the cows are just kind of chilling by the water. Nice little scene, and it's not overly dirty or smoky. Like, a lot of times when you see these, the um, canvas is just completely wretchedly covered in yellow or dark gray sort of um, smoke and and it's not just from people smoking that cause that that is one cause of it but the other cause of um, discoloration on canvas like this is that people heated with fireplaces and that smoke from the fireplace and the the chimneys would kind of um, you know especially if you had this over the fireplace could cause a lot of damage but this one's fairly clean I imagine that sky in the mountains would actually be a lot brighter than what we're seeing right there, but really that's still a um, pretty well-kept little painting. So I'll have to investigate who P. Kemp was and see if they are a known artist, but it's just a nice little scene. But there was something else here too. Did you notice all this? Yep, I for sure noticed that. <laughs> There's some shoes. Now they had told me that this was mother's and grandmother's clothing from the 1930s around that era. Yeah, maybe. Let's let's have a look at them. So those have been in the family for ages, and they um. No, I don't. I, there's no tag on it, but that doesn't mean anything. Actually, a lot of people just made their own clothes back in the day. It was very very common. So that would be the front probably there, right? Button in yeah. the back. Yeah, I assume. I wonder how tall she was been would have been, or if it would have. Just, well, that's even would drag on the floor even for me, and I'm five seven. So I wonder how tall this lady was. Like back in the thirties. But you have heels on. True. Okay. Yeah. So if you had your little tippy toe heels on, it would be a normal height. But that's probably about your size. But she's pretty tiny. You can probably see me around it. You can see me around it. <laughs> well, I think you'd still fit it. You're pretty teeny tiny. This. That one definitely oh. needs a good steaming. Yeah. More of your uh, going out kind of dress, I guess. So it has a little bit of um, costume jewelry sort of ornamentation beading up at the top, rhinestones and so forth. Not full on flapper style, but close. Could you imagine haircut short with a funny little hat on and, you know, clicking your heels, doing the Charleston? <laughs> that one has a belt? Yep. Okay, it's got sort of a poofy little collar. And it has a flower detail on this one. Heavier material. But look at the design of the bottom. It has, I don't know if they can see that actually, because it's, it's almost yeah. like a patchwork kind of sewn in. Yeah, it's kind of neat it's, how they did it. Yeah, the detailing's kind of interesting actually. This one to me looks a fair bit older. Like if they were, she said that these were more 1930s era, that might be grandmother's dress because that has more of a 1900s sort of look to it with the delicate sort of um, lace details and just the way it's cut. Yeah. Remember we were looking through all those magazines a couple of videos back and the dresses that the ladies wore around 1909 or so, how they were kind of more low slung or a little looser fitting. I think that seems more of that style, but looks like it's in pretty good shape and that one had plastic over it, right? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, if you wanna grab that box marked Noah's Ark Animals, I'll peek in here. Bath towels? Yeah, look, free bath towels. Look, more art glass. That's what this is. It's more chalet art glass. I'll unpack those fully at the store. Your dad had some like this too, but these little ends were snapped off of his. Yeah. That's really common. You have to be so careful with this stuff. 
It's probably why they're packed separately. Yeah, that's a neat piece. Is it marked on the bottom? This one looks like the vase. Yeah, not marked, but it has that chalet kind of style. It looks like that same vase. It could be a match to it, yeah. Looks like a flower again. Unbroken. That underneath some nice light. It'll just shine super bright and look great. The art glass is still really popular right now. And you know, you get hundreds of dollars for these things if they're in good condition like these are. So that's a pretty good find, really. All right, what do we have in the box? There are a lot of little things in here. There's a little bear. That's kind of a cute little statue. Is this signed on the bottom? Uh, it has a little maker's mark, but these I did peek at before and I know what it is. Okay, so why don't you tell us, what is it? So I thought it was something else and it's called Artisania. Uh, I can't remember. So these are Artisania pieces from the style of Artisania. And you said they're from Uruguay, which yeah. is kind of near Buenos Aires, South America. And when you looked them up online, what were they kind of going for? It depended, like uh, between 10 and $60, depending on the piece, because the vintage ones are collectible. I mean, all of them are collectible. You said this cow was your favorite? Yeah, out of all of them. Look at this cute little face. <laughs> uh, they are pretty cute, though. But and they I... have some, like, bigger pieces as well. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. That have different detailing and stuff on them. Well, they're nicely done. Yeah. And there's a there's whole a box lot. full of them. There's a lot. So of if you think, you know, like, on average, maybe 20 bucks a piece, and how many would you say are in there? 40? It's at least 40, because there's some big, some small. There's a unicorn in here wearing a cape. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a horse blanket. Oh, it's a blanket. horse blanket. With not, a bow tie, though. <laughs> not a cape. It's a fancy unicorn. <laughs> Speaking of animals, I did see one in that other box. I was gonna come back to this box because I saw, when I was looking at this art glass, this big jumbo piece of art glass, there was this horse stuff down in there. It looks like the world's biggest piece of Beswick. Um, I don't think it is, but it is, it is English. I don't think it's a Beswick piece, maybe. It's too bad the, uh, the maker's mark is kind of obscured on, but that is an English made horse. Look at this guy, it's so big hold them up. Isn't that just a nice piece? The bridle and harness and everything on there. Even has a uh, little miniature horse brass hanging off of it too. What a neat piece. Look great on a shelf. Very proud looking horse. But what a fun collection of stuff we got today. So that's it. Um, now all we have to do is wrap everything back up, pack it all up and put it away. Melissa, thank you for your help today. <laughs> and for letting me uh, take over our dining room table for a little bit. So guys, thank you so much for watching today's episode. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. We're going to get this packed up and uh, get a price taken into the store. And uh, I'll have a whole other little selection of glassware and other goodies and should be fun. So thanks guys. We'll see you all soon and bye for now. Bye everyone. And don't forget to check out omaze.com slash curiosity incorporated for more information.